remember, you always need to watch what you ask for because you just might get it. And don't say anything that you don't mean. Because it'll come back and bite you in the ass. And I'm like, come on through, cook. Yeah. I want to put my soap on. That's basically it. Let's talk about drag and all its forms. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is going to be my review for episode 11 of season 1 of Star. Like I said, don't say things that you don't mean and do not sit around here and not be careful of what you ask for because you're asking for things and then you get them and then they may not be what you want. All money's not good money. Remember that. So, we'll get to all that. Okay, and yes, it is all this is star, that damn star. Anyway, but Carlotta and Hyel are having a whole little conversation, and he's like, you know, I can't believe you didn't tell me, you know, all this time about Cotton and all of this. And they go through all that, and through the bullshit, he basically tells her, you know, I actually, I could see, you know, once it was said, I could see he said, Cotton actually looks like my mother. And I'm like, oh, wow. So that was like really wild. And then whenever Cotton and Hayo actually sat down, you know, I was like, well, I was wondering how, because he's a street person, you know, he's a street man. And, you know, especially the, the gay thing and the trans thing is always, it's, it's easier when it doesn't belong to you. Okay, and this is how I, this has been my growing up. Everything was always easier, and everybody was always cool with things when it doesn't belong to them. People that I've actually been around, I've actually seen that, oh, they're so cool with me, but then they end up having children that were gay, and I've seen this happen more times than not, and they abuse that child, they berate that child. They are not the nicest to that child. They give that child a hard time. And how is that when you've had gay friends all your life and you dare to misuse your child? Are you serious? So it's always easier to sit back and say those things. See, stop saying things that you don't mean. Oh, you know, it, it, be whatever you're going to be. Just be the best at it. Mm -hmm. All the little cliches. Don't worry about what nobody thinks. Child, that's the hell with that. But then whenever it gets, when it's one of your own, then you're singing a whole different song. You ready to go down there and jump off of one of these bridges because you didn't got, you know, your little boy got a little too much twinkle in his eye. So, mm, so I was kind of wondering how high he was going to take this. But he was really cool. And he did tell Cotton, you know what, I want to be there. Because he asked her, are you sure? about this surgery are you sure you know what he's saying i'm asking because of your safety and that kind of thing are you sure you know you can't reverse it so this is why i'm asking and she's like oh no no no! i'm sure very very sure i have my money and this that and the other and i go tomorrow i got a big half you know down payment of half and he's like cool and he ended up telling her you know he told her that she does remind him of his mother you know, and that kind of thing. And he, she said, you know, Cotton so She said, I was always wondering where I got this good hair from because I'm half Mexican. He said, no. He said, we're not Mexican. We're Peruvian. We're Peruvian. So that was that. I said, girl, Peruvian, bitch. That explains the, the motherfucking good ass hair, bitch. Because you know Peruvian hair is the shit, bitch. But anyway, so that was funny. And he basically told her, I want to be there for the surgery. Is that okay? And she's like, yeah, you know? So that was great. Um, and it was genuine. It was genuine. You could tell it was genuine. So that was cool. Um, back over at the hospital, we got some more shit going on. 
Alexandra. So we got Alexandra. Alexandra has actually walked out of the accident with basically not even a scratch. And Carlotta had told her, she said, girl, God is all around you, Miss Thing. There is no way. You know, the way that car was all mangled up, she's like a mess. And it was. And he, and he is. She has been very, very blessed because we found out while she was in there that hoe was pregnant, too. She was all right and the baby's all right. They were telling her about her being pregnant and her mother was walking up and baby, her mother said, pregnant? What do you mean, Alexandra? You're pregnant. I said, oh boy, here we go. And she told her, don't start the shit. This is me for me to deal with. Don't worry about it. I'm not worried. I'm good. I got this. She's like, you don't, you, what do you mean you don't have it? What are you saying? She's like, I have a doctor where you can go. She said, this is my decision to make. You need to go back to the hotel and chill out. I have to go check on Derek. Derek's not doing so well. So we get in there with Derek. And, for, you know, he finally comes around. And when she was going to go to, going to tell him about the baby, his grandmother actually ended up coming in. They told her, you know, to go only have one person in the room at a time. So this is going on. And... Um, she leaves before she gets the chance to tell him the doctor ends up telling him his ass is paralyzed so he's paralyzed from the waist down um because he kept saying yeah doc i'm ready to go he's like you know this i love your face and all but i'm ready to go home and when do these drugs wear off because i'm not feeling you know i'm still feeling numb you know in my legs and stuff and he's like mm -mm, no more feeling you can not walk again and he told he made the doctor promise not to tell his grandmother, not to tell Alexandra. So um, Alexandra, next time she sees him, she ends up telling him that about the baby and all that. And he told her he had told her about you know pursuing her dream and all of this stuff. So everything's very sketchy at this point. We don't know. I'm sure she's going to keep the baby. I'm sure she's going to. Um, Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen with their storyline, but we'll we'll see, we'll see, because that's that's a rough blow, um, to turn out and be a, overnight. Now you're a paraplegic. Um, I know what that looks like. I actually lived through that when I was younger. My cousin, I have a cousin that actually got shot in his back and has been paraplegic since he was 20 years old. Um, and it was, it's weird. It's a one day you're walking and the next day you're not. And he went through a lot. And I, and I say, I know how that, I, I don't know. I know as a family member looking on living in the house with him and, and all of this, because he lived with us at for a spell. He came and lived with us and that kind of thing. So I seen him go through that transition. It wasn't pretty. It was very hard, <laughs> very hard, but he does very well for himself, and he has good days and he has bad days, and he's now, what, I'm 45, he's 55. My cousin still has good days and he has bad days about his situation, so it's a lot to um, to digest. Anyway, um, yeah, and it's so funny because Derek is very much like my cousin, very quiet. My cousin's a very quiet person, not very talkative, so... Yeah, it was kind of, that was weird to sit and watch, for me watching that, but <clears throat> it was what it was. Um, so let's jump back over to Cotton. So Cotton has gone back to the house. And there's a letter that Jocelyn had left, Jocelyn Hernandez that left a letter. Ha ha, bitch, I got your money. And I done took me a, a bus. I'm out of here. I'm going to make a new life for myself, bitch. Get me a fresh new start. And thank you so much for telling how ill that I had syphilis. Payback's a bitch, ain't a bitch. And you see where she broke into Cotton's little safe and stole all the money. So Cotton was devastated. Absolutely devastated. Next we see if Cotton, Cotton ends up going to see... Um, Andrew. Andrew Wu. 
she wants to see him and he's kind of like stopping her at the door and she's like no no no, no. We, we need to talk i have to talk to you it's very very important this that thing and the other and i, I was sure she was going to go and apologize and ask for his help and all of that because she was really desperate like she needed to go the very next day so she can get her surgery get to make that payment the next day and he's being very, you know, evasive. And she's like, is there somebody in there? She, he's like, this is not the right time. She busts her way in, honey. And this girl sitting up in there, little heifer sitting there. She's going to say, really? Really, Drew? A white bitch? And she was like, um, this is cotton. Um, so for her, she's like, uh-uh. This is a girl who left her thong in your bedroom, and she's going in there to get it. She went into the bedroom, baby, stole his checkbook, baby, and popped on out of there. Next, we seen her see she went to Hail, told Hail, look, I need a favor. I don't want to hear nothing about it. Um, I just need this one favor. And he's like, what, what, what? So he ends up telling her, you know, she said, I, I need a fake ID. And he's like, what? You know, she's like, I'm not going into the details. I'm not doing all. He's like, no, no, no. We're not going to do this whole fake favor thing. And all. I need to know what is going on, Cotton. She said, look, just do me this one favor and I won't ask you again. I promise you. So she, he, he, he said, I want to do it, but I just want to know what's going on. She's like, whatever. So she ended up getting the fake ID off of Hyel. And I'm sure Hyel still don't know exactly what she was doing, but. Baby, next time we seen her, that bitch went, she went to um, some form of check cash in place or whatever. Wrote her up a check, baby. And you seen her cash it, cash it out, and they were giving her the money from the check. She went and wrote the check, cashed the check. And then they paying the camera back, baby, and the bitch was in full motherfucking drag. She was a little boy, honey. No hair, had a little mustache coming in and painted on, and a full on drag. I said, Amaya Scott, bitch, you have better work. I don't know what Lee Daniels said to Amaya or paid Amaya, but I was shocked. I was shocked. Um, She's such a beautiful woman that I, I just, my hat was off to her to actually be brave enough to actually come all the way back down out of her transition and play this part. Bravo, Miss Thing. Bravo. Because, you know, tra transgender women very, very funny about their ma their past masculinity and that kind of thing. So, again, bravo for being so transparent, Amaya Scott. Bravo to you, girl. And she did it, honey. And then get, got up in there and, and let you know, honey, don't get it fucked up. I'm who I am. She did what she had to do. She got in the car, baby. And the first thing she did was put some lipstick on. I said, <laughs> I loved it. I, it was. It just meant so many different things on so many different levels. It it just it made me chuckle. It made me smile. It made me laugh, and it made me say, mm, "You deep, girl. You're deep." I lived. I said, "Okay, Mister Maya. Hats off to you, bitch." Um. So that's what's going on with Cotton. Um. And yeah, Andrew, we will have a hard time about tracing that that little change, honey. Um, in the meantime, in between time, we actually see how ill. There's this whole situation with the band and the group. Big Boy came to see them because you know they've been making a little name, making a buzz for themselves around the area. And how ill just got them signed to a five city tour. So they're going to do like five little city tour and all of this. And um, we noticed Hunter started hanging around real tough. Hunter's gotten very, very possessive of Star. And this part, I, I hated how it was written because it was written 
in so fast. Like, like it was like, okay, yesterday he was paying you know, much attention. Now all of a sudden he's a stalker. So it was, it moved it too fast for me, but cool. I know we ain't got so much time to work with. Um, Big boy showed up at one of the rehearsals for a group. And he's like, I'm interested in signing you all and producing you all, but you got to get rid of High Hill. So that was that. Then High Hill and Big Boy had a run in, and Big Boy talked much shit to um, High Hill. They went back and forth, and then everything blew up. It was just a mess. Everything blew up. Stars spilled all the beans about Eva and how they knew that Hayo had lied to them and fuck him. Stars ready to drop him and go on with Big Boy. Um, Carlotta has said something to them after the fact of he's, you know, his loyalty and that kind of thing. So we got that thing hanging in the balance. Um, and right after that, Hayo's car that he disposed of the body. And all that, the car was found. They were looking in the car for DNA. Last thing we actually see is the cops busted in High Hill's apartment and telling him he's being charged with the murder of Otis because the DNA was found in the car. And that fucking Eva is sitting down on the side of the bed grinning and looking like Reagan from the goddamn Exorcist, like she got some shit up her sleeve. I said, so I guess the girls can go ahead on and go with Big Boy now. And Eva knows for a fact, bitch, they ain't taking you with them. They're not. So, beat it, Mama Sita. So that was a whole mess. Um, very, very interesting. So the last thing, you know, I was going to talk about Star because I ain't talking about Star. Star and Hunter. Like I said, he's become a bit of like a stalker. And he's going on and on, and he wants, he doesn't want her to go on the tour, and this, that, and the other. And he's always very jealous. They were doing a photo shoot, and in the photo shoot, they wanted um, Star to be very provocative in the photos with Eva. And he got jealous over that. And then they, he, he wants to argue. Then he's sitting out there drinking all this beer and turn the TV up real loud. She's like, what are you doing? Like, I don't have time for this today. Why are you starting to try to pick a fight, Hunter? And they're just talking back and forth. And he ends up, she shut the TV off. He get up, they get to arguing. And he's like, I did all this for you. You know what I mean? And she's like, oh, what? She's like, Hunter, it's a house. It is a house. That's it. It's a house. I have dreams. This house is not my dream. You already know this. Like, really? Honey, and she's like, you know, I told you I loved you. She forced her into doing it. You know, we were in the bed. He forced her into telling him she loves him back. And that's why I said, don't say things you don't mean because you don't even know who you're talking to. You're talking to the devil and don't know it. You you wanted that house. You got the house. So now you're stuck. You're in the house with this motherfucker and he's deranged and he's simple as hell. And he told her, you clawed your way into my life and this, that thing and the other. And before you knew anything, he had cold cocked the fuck out of her and her ass was stretched out. Stretched out. And when he and then he gonna go over and throw up in the sink. I said, Oh, that motherfucker's crazy. You know, and you feel so look what you made me do. Yeah, right. He looked around, Star's ass was gone. Call me gone, motherfucker. I'm out of here. She was gone. So that's that whole thing. Just watch what you ask for and don't be saying things you don't mean. Last thing. Alexandra and her mom had a sit down and they literally came to an understanding and her mother came out with an apology, told her, I know I haven't been the best mother. I want to be a good mother to you. Um, whatever you decide, I'm going to back you and I'm going to try to be the mother that I haven't been. I said, oh, now that was nice. So that was really, really good. But again, we got Derek laying there paralyzed and his grandma don't know and neither does Alexandra. So. Very, very interesting. A lot going on. Um, we will see. Because the season finale is next week. So we'll see what's going on. Go on. I'm sure Lee got something in store for us. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye.